Shalom, 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 first and foremost. Before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Akwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear or forbear, and the sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Mm, Salakia. As well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, are like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And for this particular epistle, I'm just flowing through the spirit. And I wanted to entitle this epistle. <laughs> I wanted to entitle this epistle. The roller coaster of talking to Jake. All right. And this goes for both. Jake man, you know, the Jake men and the Jake women, all right? The true biblical Hebrew is like the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the speckled bird. Hebrew is like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen, all right? And it's just, it's just basically getting into how, you know, the love we have for the ministry, the love we have for Yahweh, Bash, Meow, Shah, being the, you know, through his Rechak Wadash, being the driving force that allows us to keep doing what we do because it's a beautiful work and nothing could take our love away from it but Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah himself Adawan Rathazah he keeps us that we endure to the end that we you know that we we never give this up we never want to give this up all right now with that comes with dealing with the stupidity of our own people all right the constant complaining the ignorance the stupidity that comes with Dealing with Jake, no matter how much you break something down to the simplest terms, it's just, <laughs> it's it's a constant roller coaster that no other nation of people will put up with, all right? And I'm saying, and the reason why I'm getting into this epistle, it's not really, it's not really a, um, this one isn't a particular spiritual rant, so to speak. It's just uh, an observation that came to me through the spirit just now. And the point of this is, so any Hebrew Israelite, you know, brother or sister that hears this can appreciate our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, even more because he's always working. This is why I made an epistle a while back saying that he's with you even in the simplest moments. You know, just because you haven't watched a, a prophet part the Red Sea in front of you doesn't mean the Lord doesn't love you. It doesn't mean he's not performing great miracles. It's a great miracle in and of itself, just for um, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to wake up in these last days to the understanding that they are the biblical Hebrew Israelites, despite the fact that these Amalekites, these uh, Tic Tac uh, had us, these 1948ers pretending to be us in the Holy Land, spent billions of dollars to hide the truth. It's the Lord, man. So when we tell you what we tell you and we use the scriptures and you say stupid crap, like... uh just dumb crap like when you come at the men of the lord as if you know they're just telling you something new that's completely uh off the wall or it's never been heard of before and we tell you hey look uh go to this and that and you say you, you know you walk up to the camp and ask a brother hey uh you know what's your opinion on this and a brother says hey bro hey uh, could you give me uh job chapter such and such and such and such and you say no no no, i want your opinion no our opinion is what's what's got us in captivity and like bro Jake is so stupid, you don't even realize what you're asking for. Why would you come to the men of the Lord to inquire about the Lord and ask them their opinion? The men of the Lord are not wicked, man. We're not, we're not moving in our own understanding. Let me get the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5, and it reads, Trust in the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi on Shah, with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. Now, why does the Lord say that? Let me see if I can get this precept. The heart is. Oh man, 144 verses on that. The water y'all push me out, shot. But yeah, let me narrow it down though. Um, deceitful. The water y'all push me out, shot. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter uh, 17, verse 9, and it reads, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
Ah, Yahweh Bosh Miosha, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. All right. So if we lean into our own understanding, Jake, we can't do you any more. We can't do you any good than you've already done yourself. All we can do is is uh, pour more condemnation upon your head if we give you our own opinion. We don't know anything. Yeah, how about Shmiao Shah is the one that gives us the wisdom, man. But you don't want to hear it. You want to hear what you want to hear. And if that's the case, don't ask the men of the Lord anything. Just stick to Christianity. Stick to uh stick to uh black unconsciousness. Stick to that uh the, the nigga woman is God bullshit. Keep, just keep that. If you don't want to inquire of your how about Shmiao Shah, you know, if you're not listening to the men of the Lord, if you always got some stupid rebuttal when the men are speaking, all right. Then just don't ask. Go about your step. Just go your, go your way, man. Just go your way. It's no point. Jake will say the stupidest crap. Oh, well, you Hebrew Israelites, you're preaching, you're preaching hate. Negro, first and foremost, you're hated of all nations. These seventeen other heathen nations that you keep going to bat for, that you about to damn near eat a missile for, they put you in captivity and before one of you dumb niggas try to use the, the the weak argument of oh well see the lord you know you were the ones who made the lord this and that so it was a punishment for your sins we know that stupid but we're telling you that it's multifold it doesn't just stop at the lord punishing us for our sins the lord wants to punish the heathen the lord is a, he's like the like the elders keep saying man the how about me on shot is the master chess player he can definitely to say delete two birds with one stone that doesn't give the lord even that doesn't give the lord enough credit yeah how about meow shy man what this happened <laughs> judgment but yeah man yeah how about meow shy the heavenly father he's the one that can put the spirit on a nation to do wickedly Judge that same nation, all right, with another nation, with another nation, okay? And then once that's done, judge the nation that he used to judge the nation prior, if that makes sense. So, yes, Esau was the wicked. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bosh, Meow Shah, put us in captivity under the basis of men. Esau, even the self proclaimed so called white man who's not white. That's the mask he wears. He's not the color of a cloud, and he, nor is he the color of milk or anything that's actually white. Nor is he spiritually pure. He's the red Hebrew Edomite and the devil that the Bible speaks of. Devil meaning deceiver. He deceived you stupid ass niggas into believing that he's the most high, that he's the heavenly father's only begotten son, that he's the angels, that he's the saints, that he's the prophets of old. He even deceived a lot of you dumb niggas into believing that he's the Egyptians. You stupid as hell. And all it takes is some stupid butthurt Edomite to hop on the internet and tell you, uh, yeah, well, you know, the people in the region of Asia and Anatolia, they were uh, they were uh, fair skin. Shut the hell up, bro. And then that's another thing. I'm going I'm to probably start doing videos to the spirit of Adewan Rathaza about dismantling that whole fair skin notion. Okay? Because that whole fair skin, it came from Esau basically trying to, um, you know, break Jake down more psych on a psychological level to make Jake feel insecure and, and um, less than for having swarthy skin, which is actually in the image of the Heavenly Father. So if you want to be technical, the real fair skin is the swarthy and tawny Hebrew Israelites, okay? And yes, our people come back in all shapes and uh, sizes and, um, and colors. But the point is, all right, that whole fair skin bullshit, nah. Esau is a clean leper. We give our people the scriptures letting you know the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, the prophets of old, and the holy angels are all, they would all have swarthy or tawny skin complexion. All right? Now, our speckled bird brothers and sisters that are scattered amongst these other nations, all right, pursuant to the curses, just like we're scattered in these other nations, the only difference between us and them is, you know, after many generations, you know, their fathers, they, um, 
they probably I think they predominantly dealt with the heathen women of those nations and after like I think two or three generations then you know your appearance starts to change but you're still the seed of your father but a stupid nigga oh well you know uh, you spoiled your seed you polluted your seed brother shut the fuck up man just shut up you're the polluted seed you, you blackity black Israelites are the polluted seed and the last we checked, didn't you uh didn't one of your so-called generals uh Quinoth or whatever his name was that was pushing that pro blackity black bullshit? Didn't he bow out the truth? Because the Holy Spirit ain't dealing with them, man. The men of the Lord are gonna be on fire. Even the even these bugged out Jakes, they they still in it, you know, for filthy Lucas' sake, but they still in it. What, what did your boy say? Your boy, oh, uh, he's gonna do an announcement video to his to his little congregation. Yeah, guys, I feel like this is my last video. Bro, bro, how does that not remind you of these movies that Esau makes when somebody uh is basically like, well, about time to be hitting the old dusty trail. Like, bro, he's letting you know he don't care. That's why the apostles and the elders made the video. Uh, I think the beloved old apostle of Rom Law, he made a video titled The Hireling Fleeth. You know? To let you know that your doctrine, it doesn't hold no water, man. The men of the Lord, the true men of Yahweh, Bosh, Meow, Shah, we preaching this true doctrine. It's 144% doctrine all through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bosh, Meow, Shah, Bosh, Shem, Dash, dealing with our apostles and elders on down. And we work, you know, Jake do what they do to make money, but we're not using the truth to make money. Like IUIC, we're not out here with networks off the truth. We deal with our own personal uh, things, whether it's good or bad or ugly. All right. We don't fleece the congregation for money. All right. And you don't see any of the men of the Yahweh Bash Meow Shah who teach the 100 percent doctrine of truth and sincerity bowing out the truth. Getting lukewarm in the spirit, they candle getting blown out. Those that that it does happen to, like I said, you don't see the ones that are moving in sincerity that Yahweh Bash Meow Shah is dealing with. You don't see them fizzling out. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be my last video uh getting on Esau. What? Nigga? You, your last video getting on Esau, only to go back in the world and be got on by Esau, to be stepped over by Esau, to be stepped on by Esau and the other heathen nations that are confederate with them. How the hell does that make sense? What does make sense, though, the Wadi Haabash Miao Shai, is a blackity black nigga falling out the truth because he was teaching the wayward doctrine. That didn't hold no weight. It had no fuel. What fuel do you have talking about? Oh, all the Israelites are black. Negro, every single nation of people on the planet, all of the heathen nations, including the chosen nation, the nation of Israel, in their natural states, uninterrupted, all of them are what you would call black. It's not black, it's swarthy. Swarthy Tatani, that is a normal human condition. The Edomites are the only exception. And through the Edomites, you know, mingling they seed amongst the nations, now that whole paler complexion is now in the gene pool. But in the kingdom of heaven, it ain't going to be so. But the point is, everything we say is backed up by the scriptures, which is our Lord, Yahweh Shai. He comes in the volume of the book, it's written of him. He's the word made flesh. So if you're not speaking by the scriptures, you're not speaking by Yahweh Shai. You're trying to make the heavenly father Yahweh into a liar. And he's not going to take counter to that. You don't got no fuel. Even when we want to just, you know, rest and relax, the Lord puts the spirit on us and it feels just as good as anything else we could enjoy in the flesh, which you, which most of you Jakes is a slave to. You don't want to hear the truth to save your life. You think hearing about the, uh, the, the, uh, the Israelite icons that were in the Russian vault is just some, some cool shit. It's not barbershop talk, Jake. It's something that can wake you up and save your life. If you take heed, what can really save you is Yahweh Bash Miao Shah giving you the faith to get into these scriptures and rehearse the righteous acts and follow Yahweh Shah in the salvation. But seeing those, um, if you are of the, of the elect, seeing those icons, if you had any false doctrine in you, it should have, it, it's as pitiful as it is that once again your enemy, the Edomite, had to show you the proof. It should have still woke more Jake up to the truth instead of just making dumb TikTok videos commenting on it like children. And and that's the other thing that was on my spirit about that. Esau is so ahead in the game, kind of like when, like let's say you playing a video game. When you're ahead in the game, sometimes you may 
you may lose on purpose to make it more challenging to you or let, let your opponent, you know, make a few more plays than you than they would have otherwise if you was kind of taking them seriously. Esau is so ahead that the Lord is putting the spirit on him to, to do things like this. Like, hey, you know, uh, you know, when I you know, when I told you that uh, the Messiah was uh, was actually a, a pale face. I, I, I lied. Sorry, guys. Let me open up this little vault right here. Open up this little, open this little door up, and this little pop out image that you see. Oh, what do you see? You see a, a swarthy prophet of the nation of Israel before the Renaissance period. What does Jake do? Jake gonna see that. Oh man, that's crazy. That's deep. And then go ahead and eat some damn crab legs right after. <laughs> Jake ain't gonna inquire about Leviticus the eleventh chapter. <laughs> Deuteronomy the 14th chapter that tells you not to eat the unclean foods and how to please your how boss me on shot with, with your diet by keeping the dietary laws they not gonna uh, they not gonna inquire uh, how do we get here they're not gonna read Deuteronomy the 20th chapter going down to the 15th verse how do we get out of here they're not gonna read Luke the first chapter start at the 67th verse they're not gonna understand or care to read <laughs> Amos the third chapter Start at the second verse where the Lord tells you, you only if I know of all the people of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. They're not going to get the hope that comes from. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get that precept. One of my favorites. Psalm chapter 47. Verse 18, and it reads, he sendeth out his word. He melted them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known him. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai. So the Lord is telling you through a man out his own heart. Our beloved King David, who also was a prophet, by the way, that the Lord is only dealing with Jake. And if King David was going off and if this was hate speech and these, this and that. Why didn't the Lord rebuke him? We know it's a sin to bear false witness and it's a sin to be, a you know, a, a false prophet and speaking presumptuous, speaking presumptuously Salakia in the name of the Lord. So let's see what King David's sins were. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 15, verse 5. Throughout your Yahweh, Shemiel Shai. And it reads, Nevertheless, for David's sake, did Yahweh, Shemiel Shai, his power, give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh, Shemiel Shai, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah, the Hittite. What happened in that matter? David, King David committed adultery and he committed uh, murder. So those were the only sins King David had in the eyes of Yahweh Bashmi al Shab, which means that's the only sins that King David had, period. Now, why doesn't it mention anything about old King David? He was wrong for what he did to the heathen. All right, dumb niggas. Let's see. And, and you know, it's never about the heat. And like, like brothers, and like myself and, and the big brothers keep noticing. It's always about you weak niggas trying to save your fucking oppressor. Like that damn, uh, that damn Keisha Bedwinch. Like, come on now. And that's one thing. Another thing I want to make note about these Keishas. Don't think just because Keisha comes off blackety black, or she may even, you know, take more pipe from Jake than she takes from Esau, or she doesn't lay down with Esau at all, that she's not a bad wench. She's a bad wench in the spirit, man. If she's not dealing with the truth of your how about me on shot, she's a bad wench. Because she's going to go to bat and make an ass out of herself for Esau, her damn oppressor, the oppressor of her nation. The devil who has a system where her men are being suppressed from being men that get decent, they are de incentivized from being men by way of the prison industrial complex, by Eve being so taken by this Babylonian wine that the first thing she wanted to do, she get into an argument with Jake. She want to call the authorities, the, the Edomite authorities. She want to put Jake on child support, do everything she can to ruin Jake's life just by the box. You 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 use your beauty as a snare. You wonder why Jake don't give a damn how good you look, and they want to deal with the snow, or they want to deal with Moab, or they want to deal with Ammon. And it's lawful in the eyes of Yahweh Bash me out shy. But let me go ahead and get this precept. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 14. And it reads, 
I'm going to get to verse 13. And it reads, And David gave him a name when he returned from smiting of the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. So King David put 18,000 Syrians to death. I don't hear you, you cornball Negroes. Oh, what about the Syrians? You don't care about the Syrians. You care about Esau. It's not righteous to care about your enemy, you clown. When you see scriptures about love thy neighbors, talking about other Israelites, but you don't study to know that. And let me get verse fourteen. What did he do to uh, what did he do to your uh, your slave master, the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of? Verse fourteen. And he put garrisons in Edom, throughout all Edom he put garrisons. Huh. Okay. Reading on. And all they of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahushua, what did he do? Preserve David whithersoever he went. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. So who who's more justified in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashem Yahushua, whose name is not Yah, you damn clowns, and his son's name is not Yahshua or Yeshua? nor Jesus, nor God, none of these things. It's Yahweh, that name of the Heavenly Father, which means he is, he exists. He's the Ancient of Days, Allah Shadia, Power Almighty, the King of Terrors, and his only begotten Son, through whom the world was created. Yahweh Shai means he saves, he delivers. And he's saving Israel, his people, from their sins. If the Lord wanted Lord Yahweh Shai, whom you ignorantly called Jesus to save the Edomites, he would have made him, he would have made Lord Yahweh come through the line of Amalek. But he didn't. And those damn gutter rats, they 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 disrespect our Lord every chance they get. They don't even believe in him. Why? Because unlike you, stupid niggas, they know what Yahweh is really about. He's not coming to save them from they don't need to be saved from anything. The world needs to be saved from these niggas. He's coming to put his foot on their neck. And you too, if you want to get down with him. And then you wake up in the kingdom, a nutsack is a light, in your right mind. We get up to shame and everlasting contempt because you stood against the gospel that was for your benefit. Even though none of us deserve this salvation, let alone the kingdom of heaven, the Lord said he's going to give it to us. Let me go ahead and get this precept and then another one, I'm going to wrap it up. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Verse eight, and it reads, now, therefore, thou shalt say unto my servant, David, thus saith Yahweh Tazabah Wath, I took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep to be ruler over my people. It's like over my people, over Israel. Getting excited. Verse nine, and I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight. And I have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Esau, who you damn bed wenches and you coon niggas love so damn much. And another point about um, 2 Samuel chapter 8. It said King David got him a name. Let me go back to that. In verse 13, right here, it says, King David, he got him a name when he returned from smiting the series in the Valley of Salt. So, Yahweh Bashmi on Shai preserved King David to the point where he got a reputation, a mighty man reputation, for putting heathen to the sword? Because the Lord don't care about the heathen. There's no contradiction with Yahweh Bashmi on Shai. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10, and it reads, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Yahshua Allah, and I will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them as so like any more as before time. Okay? Verse 11, And as since the time I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also Yahweh Bashmi al telleth thee that he will make thee in house. And when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, meaning when King David passes away, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels and will establish his kingdom. King David is going to have a descendant that comes from his direct lineage, which is always determined by the seed of your father. Verse 13. And he, Salakia, he shall build a house for my name and I will establish his, the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. 
and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever according to all these words and according to all this vision. So did Nathan speak to David. Amen. So right here, the heavenly father, then this son that he was talking about is Yahweh Because when you get that Hebrew word bond, the word for son, it, does, it doesn't always mean your immediate son. It also gets into son, grandson, great grandson, any of your male descendants. So this was talking about Lord Yahweh because your Lord Yahweh was beaten with the stripes of men. Why? Because Lord Yahweh was King Solomon in the previous incarnation. King Solomon went off. We know how the famous northern kingdom, southern kingdom split by worshiping the idols of his heathen women. Not because he had them, because he worshipped their idols for you bug outs. He didn't pay for his sin as King Solomon. King Solomon passed away of old age, but the Lord, he always gets you. No one escapes judgment. So Lord Yahweh Shai, he paid for the sins that he had as Adam and the sins as King Solomon. But as Yahweh Shai, he had no sin. That was it, the, the, the Lord. He like the like the elder Yahshua says, the Lord Yahweh Shai, he's far out. You can't. His ways are past finding out less he's dealing with you. You get enough unto salvation, but we'll never truly know the mind of Yahweh Bashmi al -Shai. So this kingdom right here is going to be built upon the same way the kingdom was built in David's time. The heathen getting their ass handed to them because of what they did to the children of Israel. So get the proper understanding when you read, Jacob, just be quiet. Go back into the world. If you don't like the Hebrews lights, then just fuck off. You're a Hebrews light too. You just you just a dumb one. You just don't, you know. You just a lion that's basically trying to. <laughs> you're trying to bleat like you're a lamb or a goat. You're trying to make the sounds of a goat or a lamb, and move like one. But you just not there. The Lord ain't dealing with the two thirds, man. And I don't want you how about me. I'm sure I brought this out. This lesson was uh, edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel, the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to you, our beloved Heavenly Father and his beloved Son, who is our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rechak Wadash, double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sensei, Arkham of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for better sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, life foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen, Kwam Yasharala, and the Baba We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah, we got next. Adawan Ratazah. Shema Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad. Shalom.